Sawyer sees the writing on the wall. Locke accepts his condition, and Claire returns in rare form. All that and more on today's official Lost audio podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the official Lost audio podcast. We're here today with executive producers Damon Lindelof and Carlton Cuse to talk about The Substitute and preview our upcoming episode entitled Lighthouse, in which Hurley must convince Jack to accompany him on an unspecified mission, and Jen stumbles across an old friend. Of course, we all know who that old friend is, Feral Claire. Damon Carlton will have more on her in just a minute. But first, a reminder that if you aren't getting enough of a Lost fix to check out Lost Tracks on iTunes. It's a seven-track digital download, individually titled by character Kate, Sawyer, Locke, Hurley, etc. And it allows you to get inside the minds of the character and find out what inspires and motivates them. All that at iTunes. You can also spend your spare time crafting queries, emails, concerns, and other such musings for Damon and Carlton to possibly read on the podcast. You can send all those to Lost fan questions at abc.com, all one word. Just make sure you check out the legalese on the back end of this podcast before sending your email. Now, though, here are Damon and Carlton. Good morning, Carlton. How are you doing today? Oh, man, I'm just spectacular. Well, really. that's fantastic. Well, it's the morning after The Substitute. And, is that, uh, what is that? Oh, the, the episode of Lost. Right. that was on last night. Yes, exactly. The, um, and uh, we're doing a podcast. Pa- pardon us for being a little bleary-eyed. We are in what we affectionately refer to... Hell? Hell, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have been uh, writing until the wee hours of most nights. Yes, exactly. What, is, what constitutes a wee hour? When do, you, what, what do you, when do you get to a wee hour? It is an hour, Carlton, when you actually start shrinking. That is ah, why it's called the wee hour. Okay. So if you were to put a marking on your wall... Um, somewhere between around 2.30 a.m. and 3.30 a.m., your body weight reduces as a result of uh, losing uh, 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 water. But by the way, we should mention that Chris is not here. If you hear laughter, that's because people are actually amused We've by We've brought in some substitute uh, <laughs> right. uh, people who have been hired strictly to laugh. Um, yes. We actually pick them up in front of uh, a local warehouse um, <laughs> construction company yes, store. Exactly. We pulled up outside. We said, do you speak English? They said, no. We <laughs> said, <laughs> He said, we got a podcast for you. Okay. But, so, yeah, so, Chris, Chris, our producer, and his lovely wife, Rachel, just gave birth to a lovely baby. Chloe. And yeah. Chris, Chris didn't give birth to, to Well, her. it was a joint effort. He I'm, was there. I'm going to just say that, yes. you know, he was involved in the process. Um, so I congratulations. I don't want to go any further with that. That's a, the rest of that stays in the mystery category. Congratulations, Chris and Rachel. And, and Chloe. And welcome, Chloe. If you have we any questions, you. Chloe, we, you can send them here to the podcast. All right, let's do a quick rehash of uh, The Substitute, then let's get on to a little prehash of next week's episode, which is called Lighthouse. Right, okay, so here's something that I actually wanted to bring up with you, Carlton. Yep. There, has been, there has been a lot of, I, 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 I see, people are having a, a hard time deciding what to call Locke now. They don't know whether to call him the, the Loch Ness Monster, um, Smock, some people are calling him. I prefer Unlock, you know, <laughs> but we actually have this debate in the writer's room. And we just call him Locke. We just call him Locke. I mean, he basically has taken, he's taken the place of Locke, but it's still Terry O'Quinn and he still looks like Locke. So we just refer to him as Locke. So. Right. Or the artist formerly known as Locke. Locke, exactly. Or we just, we have a symbol, but we can't actually show you the symbol on the radio. But you can call him whatever you like. Is this um, technically radio? No, it's not really. It's no, audio. It's not even. On the audio. Remotely radio. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we're gonna, when we're referring to the character of Locke, we, if we're, do- we're talking about him on the island, obviously it is the smoke monster slash man in black, whatever, whatever has. Smock. Yeah. I don't want to call it smock. No, smock's not good. Why are you wearing a smock right now, Carlton? Are you, <laughs> you going to do any is, uh, pottery? I just, wanna, I just want to make sure that you don't get any spit on me during this podcast. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, last night in The Substitute, a couple things have come up. There's, there's two things people are really talking about. 
I would um, say the numbers would be one, wouldn't you? I would, and uh, and clearly we've talked about the numbers in great length in the past. We've kind of kind of gone on record as saying, look, we're never going to be able to explain why these particular numbers. We've gone on about the Valenzetti equation, but at least now we've we've revealed that these numbers correspond to some of our passengers. That's right, and I think you know for us again, this is the classic example of how you know we uh, in the show are hoping to kind of point out connections and and have you understand a little bit about the significance of things, but to actually elementally explain Why the mystery of numbers, things yes. is an impossible task. But uh, possible that the, that the numbers don't end here, maybe just a little bit more, Carlton? I'd say we can give them a little bit more. A little I'd bit more. I'd say there might be a little bit more pretty soon. They Will, will they have to wait till the finale? No. They oh. will not have to wait till the finale God, to get a little bit more. I have to start listening to this podcast. You should. You learn a lot. So uh, next week, in fact, we have an episode called Lighthouse. Oh, and uh, I have. But a couple it's not. Of... It's not a literal lighthouse, right? It's one of those metaphorical titles. I, I hope it's one of those titles that maybe has multiple meanings. Okay. Um, but I have actually a question for you, which is sort of I've been witnessing in the Flash Sideways that the characters from the island, um, you know, they've now met in new and different ways. Sure. Um, getting you know as, as eight fifteen landed in Los Angeles is this going to be kind of a continuing theme, Damon? Are you know are there going to be sort of interesting crosses that bring our characters together in new and different and uh, potentially exciting ways? Is that a motif? Well, well, Carlton, I think what you're really asking is um, what is the point of the Flash Sideways? And obviously, this is sort of a very polarizing an ongoing debate in the uh, in the fan community. It's not so much whether you like them or not. It's, are they going to lead us anywhere? What is the purpose of this? And clearly, you've now illuminated, certainly one of the purposes appears to be that these characters are running into each other and perhaps helping each other. What we like about The Substitute, particularly, which which was um, written by Elizabeth Sarnoff and Melinda Sue Taylor, the great writers on the show, and Liz is also actually an EP, is that there are a number of incidents over the course of that episode where Locke is actually helped by other characters. Hurley helps him when he gets fired by Randy, gives him a new job. Rose straightens him out when he gets to the temp agency. I really enjoyed seeing Rose again, by the way. That was, you, that was great. You can, ne- you can never have too much Rose. Yeah. And, and uh, so, so that's sort of the ongoing motif. Where are we actually going with the sideways? Well... Um, to be determined. To be determined. But but clearly there are we're now hitting at more significant changes. For Locke and Helen were most definitely not together the last time we saw them. Yeah, two. I think I think it was nice to see them happy together actually. Well, well, I, hope it, I hope it lasts. All right. Uh, is there anything else we're going to say about uh Lighthouse or yeah, we moving I, on? Yeah, I do want to say this. As much as I enjoyed last night's episode, I am dying to see Claire again. What, how long do I have to wait, Carlton? You will not have to wait very long at all, in fact. Claire is actually kind of one of my favorite characters this season. The fact that she's kind of had three years to go a little uh, Borneo on the hmm. island is kind of one of my favorite storylines. And uh, she's got some cool stuff coming up. I like that phrase, going Borneo. Yeah. I, I, don't know, I have no idea what that means, but I, I like it myself. All right, on to questions. Questions. Thank Here's you. your questions. Thank you, Karen and Amy. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna. Here's something you can just clear up. You know, we don't uh, just clear this up. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm, we're because gonna, th- this whatever you're about to ask will never be asked again. I'm gonna okay. give you the very definitive Mal. answer. Mal. Mal asked this question. Okay. Mal Smith. And uh, in this week's Flash Sideways, the date on Claire's ultrasound was October twenty second, two thousand four. Can you confirm or deny that this was in fact the new date of Oceanic Flight eight fifteen arrival, or was this in fact just a prop error? Um. This. Uh. In, in, in the honesty column was an error, but in the let's pretend that everything we do is intentional column, the ultrasound was malfunctioning, Carlton. The ultrasound was <laughs> that's, malfunctioning. That's the fantastic yes. save. Oceanic but still lands on September 22nd, it, 2004. It was actually just unfortunately a prop error. By the way, there's a PS to Mal's uh, question here, which is I think the new Claire we see on the island should be referred to as Claire So. Oh, Clever, like, like, like Russo. And Russo. That's good. I like that. Mal, you rock. Okay. Okay. You're um, up, Damon. This question, and Carlton, I'm going to go on record here and say that your answer to this question is going to impact someone's life in a very profound and lasting way. So think before you respond. This is sent from Sunny and Christine in South San Francisco, California. The question. My wife and I just welcomed our son into this world, and we're deciding between the names Jack and Desmond. 
Now, seeing as how we want our baby to have a bright and shiny future, we want to make sure that whomever we name him after has the aforementioned fortunate future. Rock on. Carlton, what should they name their son? They're waiting. <laughs> this infant is in a oh hospital. It oh has no goodness. name. It is oh nameless. Goodness. Wow. Okay. This is the part where I'm thinking, which is Good. sort of an unusual thing for me to do before I respond. So yes, yeah, so I would go with I would go with Desmond. I think that you know, as much as Jack is a uh, is is a wonderful character on our show, he's kind of a tortured guy, and and uh, I think Desmond generally is just kind of a happier disposition, and uh, I don't know, just the name Desmond to me. You know, I mean, Jack is Jack's kind of a cool a cool name, but but Desmond, I don't know. There's just a little more a little more something to je ne sais quoi there that I like. I just hope he doesn't come home with any nosebleeds. Do we have a last name? No, we should probably shouldn't say that. So uh, they did, they didn't put a, a last name. Okay. But I, so you're you kind of want to know like how it goes with the last yeah, name. So too. you just named a child, Carl. Congratulations. <laughs> By the way, if neither Jack nor Desmond works for you. Darlton is also <laughs> totally uh, uh, horrible, or or horrible actually idea. actually here's a new one Cardam oh <laughs> all right <laughs> so you could also name your child Cardam yeah great okay okay that's good it Here's, is a little at least I get three letters or, in that one or <laughs> as I can as I start this next question this is completely coincidental this this next question starts Konnichiwa Damkar oh wow. <laughs> Okay. Which you would like better because you get to be first in that. Scenario. No, I get I get three letters. I've always all I I don't mind card damn. I all I've wanted is letter equality. Yeah. Well, you have a few more, but you do have the N letters are also your letters too. The O N. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Konnichiwa, damn car. My wife and I are big fans. I often use clips from Lost in my English classes to spark students' interest in learning a foreign language. This means... unfortunately, I am not an English teacher, <laughs> nor am I licensed. <laughs> this means there's a small town in the mountains of Japan where the most prevalent English phrase is. What's the smoke monster? <laughs> At long last, this is from Greg and Haruka Warner, who live in Ono City in Fukui. Fukui? I can't pronounce that, Japan. I'm sure I did a bad job of that. Um, at long last, a Japanese character that doesn't pass Hurley at the airport or get struck by a meteorite. <laughs> I think actually technically you get struck by a meteor and then once it's actually hit you, stricken you, struck you, then it's a meteorite. It has to be sort of you know, inert on the ground to be a meteorite. I that think. must have been a very awkward eulogy at Trisha Tanaka's <laughs> funeral when, when they accidentally called it a meteor. But I'm glad you cleared it up, Carlton. Awesome. I happen to live in Fukui Pre- Prefecture, which is where the Ihiji Temple is located, a temple founded by the historical figure Dogen Zenji. Curious, I checked Dogen's profile, and it turns out he perished in 12. 12- 53 on September 22nd, a date any Lost fan should recognize. Was this planned or just a coincidence? Thank you for all your hard work throughout this year on the program. Greg and Haruka. This is one of those amazing moments where we do all this great, no one will ever figure this out, and lo and behold, someone has found it. And we'll tell you something else. If you trek to that temple, you will find an ultrasound machine there. (laughs) Uh, no, it's completely coincidental, but awesome. <laughs> no, I mean we the 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 origin of Dogen Zenji is intentional. Yes. The fact that his uh, date of uh, death was September twenty second was coincidental. Yes, indeed. Okay. Or was it? It was certainly not intentional by our part. We had um, nothing to do with him dying that yeah. day. Okay. Okay. So here we go. This All is right. the one we've been waiting for. Okay. I've got a Darlton slash damn car slash Carmen. Um, more, more and more, I've been thinking that you guys have pulled a fast one on us all. And this season, not season seven, is the zombie season. An infection that slowly turns people evil sounds like zombies to me. I know Saeed told Hurley he wasn't a zombie, but isn't that just the kind of thing a zombie would say? <laughs> I'm on to you guys. And that is from Clifton Satterfield. Clifton, you are on to us. <laughs> I mean... Honestly, we you know we feel like we found a way to sort of have our cake and eat it too, and um, or have our brains and eat them too. Have our brains Either and eat way. them too. Yes, that you know that that if we can't do the zombie season, it's the seventh season of Lost. At least Saeed can 
you know, at best case, resemble a zombie for a number of episodes. We decided that it would probably be outside the bandwidth of the show to go as far as to have him, you know, sort of eating human flesh or to care, to take it to a further extent, like shooting lasers out of his eyes or something like that. Zombies but, do not shoot lasers. No, out but of I'm their just eyes. saying. Only in I'm your just weird saying fantasies. that in my version they would. But um, it's still that, been fun to write sort of zombie esque version. You know of Saeed, hasn't it, Damon? It, it, the fact that the that, that we have now created the question: Is he or isn't he a zombie? You know the sort of idea that people are employing their zombie dar to to detect yeah. whether or not what what are signs of undeadness um, is uh, is pretty exciting for us. And and more to come. More to come. Exactly. The the jury's still out on Saeed. The uh, the zombie journey continues. <laughs> All right, I have one final question for you, Damon. Yep. And this is from Derek Raffelt. My question is, Derek's question is, if you had to choose which reality to live in, Damon, Island 2007 or L.A. slash dash L.A. space X 2004, which would it be and why? Would you choose the seemingly safe yet interesting world devoid of magical islands? Or would you choose a reality full of mystery, redemption, and forces bigger than ourselves? Please answer my question to make my wish come true. Thank you again from Derek. Uh, that's a great question, Derek. And I think, um, personally speaking, I would pick the island. Um, the Interesting. Island's, the island's just a little bit more exciting. But once again, Derek, I must point out, you cannot treat these two things as entirely separate entities. You know, we are not, they are not alternate timelines. That it, it, it is... I think it's more interesting. You'd like what if you got you know attacked by the smoke monster, Damon? Um, he's I, I'm I'm not really concerned about that anymore. He seems a very level-headed and rational fellow. For example, Sawyer almost fell to his death from the cliffs. Smoke monster saved him. Okay. Well, personally, I'm going with uh, the nice uh, L.A. Space X. Well, I'd like to just you know I can hang out. I'd like to uh, I, you know I'd like to you know just be kind of in a nice safe environment where there's like coffee shops and uh, restaurants and cars well and i hope you like uh, that. i hope you enjoy doing the podcast by yourself in the uh, <laughs> in the other timeline well no no untrue because if the timelines are related can't we then still do the podcasts wow my brain hurts okay which leads me to my final question right. carlton this one is from smoky d in chicago probably right. not his real name hey damon hey carlton <laughs> Spectacular job on LAX 1 and 2, but I have a foot question. Uh Uh-oh. And I have to be honest with you, Carlton. I don't know the answer to this, and and maybe you won't either, but I have to ask. Okay. We've been looking at the foot of the statue now ever since Live Together, Die Alone, and the foot that Jin Sun Said saw was a left foot, and the foot we saw underwater in LAX was the left foot as well. But when you show us the foot on the plinth in the distance when Sun and Frank and Ben um, are sort of fighting in LAX... It appears to be the right foot. Is this on purpose? Continuity gone awry? Do I have it wrong? Thanks, guys. Love the show. Season six looks awesome. Wow. Is this possible, Carlton? That we got off to the on the wrong foot to the season? <laughs> oh, Sorry. you did not disappoint Sorry. me. Wow. <laughs> you did not disappoint me. That was like I alley ooped and you were there to, to boom. Slam put the it ball in. in the in the hoop, ladies and gentlemen. Carlton and I do not rehearse the podcast. <laughs> we just wanted Shockingly. to know that happened live. <laughs> Shockingly. So that's all we got. Okay, that's um, all we have for this week. But we hope you uh, and continue to enjoy the episodes. We have some fun stuff coming up. Yeah, maybe we'll drop in again somewhere in the neighborhood between sort of six and seven we are in the literally in the middle of um you know trying to work out the last trying to end the three series. hours of the series yes. and we're working on this story and script construction for those uh those episodes so we're and we actually are simultaneously working on like 10 different episodes Boo-hoo, right now Carlton. no it's not i mean it's Joking. exciting it's exciting it, but while you're waiting for the next podcast you can uh you can find us on twitter yeah i'm damon lindelof and, and i'm carlton hughes and we are <laughs> <laughs> we are idiots <laughs> thank you for listening thank you and namaste <laughs> bye-bye that's it for this podcast lighthouse airs tuesday february 23rd from 10 to 11 p.m. only on ABC. 
And don't forget that by submitting your questions, you agree to ABC's terms of use, and you agree to have your name, city, state, and question included in this podcast in perpetuity without compensation. You must be 18 years or older to send email to abc.com. <sighs> Until next time, namaste. Namaste.